welcome everybody. I've got a great set of teammates here today. First, we're just going to go through this quick 101 presentation, and then we have the wonderful board and committee member, Susie Miller, who is going to share with us some of her passions and her experiences in her time here with Friendship Bridge. So my name is Dana Hayes, and I am a development associate here at Friendship Bridge. Friendship Bridge is a nonprofit social enterprise that empowers women in Guatemala to build a better life through vehicles such as microfinance, education, health services, and mentorship. Our mission is to help those women build a better life, and our vision is empowered women choosing their own path. So why Guatemala and why women? Globally, 689 million people live below the international poverty line of 1.9 US dollars per day. In Guatemala, as of 2019, roughly 59% of the population lives in poverty, with a disproportionate amount of that demographic being indigenous. They make up 39% of the overall population in Guatemala, but 79% of them live in poverty. In fact, 44% of our new clients come to us below the national poverty threshold, which is 3.6 US dollars per day in Guatemala. Despite a pre-pandemic stable economy, Guatemala actually reports that the population living in debt has been rising, and we know that women make up a large portion of people living in poverty. In Guatemala, high rates of violence and discrimination against women and indigenous populations tells us that our clients are doubly affected by a lack of opportunity, resources, and finances. So what do we do? Microfinance, or microcredit, is an effective global strat development strategy in areas of the world where people lack access to those formal financial systems. Microcredit gives small loans to poor people for expanding their business and breaking the cycle of poverty. Many of our clients run small micro enterprises, such as weaving, raising livestock, making handicrafts, and no matter how small a business is, it still needs investments to grow. So microcredit puts capital into the hands of the poor so that they can purchase supplies, invest in businesses, and generate profits. Our average first loan size is actually only $380, and that seems really small to us, but it can make a huge difference to a woman in Guatemala. Microcredit alone, however, is not enough to truly alleviate poverty. At a time when there are a lot of new lenders entering the market, we have focused on growth along with our clients and developed the plus services that are actually benefits of being a client at Friendship Bridge. So these plus services, education, health services, and the advanced skill set trainings have a multiplier effect that accelerate the reduction of poverty rates among our clients. With educational tools and those health services and empowerment, in 2014 to 16, the net poverty rate of our clients had reduced by 2% per year. And then from 2017 to 19, 60% of our clients in the programs showed improvement in their poverty status around a 4% reduction of poverty rate. So this tells us essentially that the longer a client is with us, the better off she is because the plus services help her to bear the burden of extreme poverty. So how are we different and in many ways more successful than other options a client may have? Unlike formal financial institutions, we don't require collateral or assets, which are often barriers to poor people borrowing money. Instead, we use social collateral and a trust bank methodology. Trust banks are small groups of women who come together and co-guarantee each other's loans, and they self-select into their groups. They can range from 7 to 25 members, and they meet monthly to make their loan repayments together, with the methodology providing a network of support for clients and accountability for repayment. And we found that it really works. Prior to the pandemic, we maintained one of the highest qualities of portfolio, greater than 98% in Central America, and in a highly competitive market, 90% of our clients say there's not a good alternative to Friendship Bridge. The loyalty is in fact proven by the fact that 95% of our clients were actually making their loan repayments by the end of 2020. So looking at the plus services that come with a microloan, these are things that you're automatically eligible for when you receive a loan from Friendship Bridge. 
Our first is and flagship is non-formal education. And this program focuses on four main pillars. Those are women's rights, family, business development, and health. The lessons are delivered monthly when they come to make their loan repayment. And our education curriculum is unique and responsive to the client's needs, taking into consideration topics that they've requested through surveys. Lessons are interactive and they are delivered through illustrated flip charts or other tools that accompany text so our pre-literate clients can follow along. Additionally, our facilitators or loan officers must speak Spanish and the local Mayan language of the women that they serve in order to ensure that all clients can understand their lessons. We believe that a microloan can be an effective hand up but the education will be the asset for life. And by combining education and training with the loans, we can help our clients build a solid foundation for that pathway out of poverty. Health for life. So imagine needing medical attention, but in order to get it, you have to give up a day's income. And on top of that, you don't speak the same language as your doctor. If they prescribe you a medication, a treatment, or surgery, you don't know what it's for, and you have to decide if it's worth spending the precious little money you do have on this mystery treatment or on food and other necessary supplies. For many of our clients, these stacking frustrations are the norm when it comes to medical care. Between the challenges and rampant misinformation about what is the cause or effect of a treatment, many clients will forego medical care for preventable diseases like diabetes, hypertension, and cervical cancer until the situation is really dire. In order to address this, Friendship Bridge has partnered with Maya Health Alliance, Wakukuwak, a health service provider operating in rural Guatemala. Mayan health nurses utilize our already established trust bank infrastructure and rapport with clients to provide education, guidance, and health screenings at no cost to the client. Health services are provided via mobile clinics that travel to the villages where the clients live. The mobile clinics are delivered by trusted and culturally sensitive female nurses, and they're designed to address the constructs that influence whether the clients participate in health screenings, recognize symptoms, and engage in necessary treatment or follow-up. If or when a complex health case is discovered, clients are provided with patient navigation services by Maya Health Alliance. A lot of our new donors may come to us through this program, Handmade by Friendship Bridge, our online store. Handmade by Friendship Bridge is a program that pertains specifically to our artisan clients. Participants gain the skills and experience needed to create and sell products to local, national, and international markets. And by acting on that opportunity, the artisans who participate in this program are empowered to design and produce market-ready products, improve their livelihoods, and ultimately, they help alleviate the effects of poverty in their families and communities through business expansion. Handmade by Friendship Bridge acts as an artisan client's first international wholesale buyer. We feature a lot of their products on our online store, which allows the program to actually be self-sufficient. Another specific skill set training program of ours is called Agriculture Credit and Training. Roughly 14.5% of Guatemala's GDP is from the agriculture sector, with almost a third of the country's labor force being farmers. This program started with a pilot of 40 clients in 2016 and now hosts 692 participants as of November. The clients opted into the program agreeing to attend and participate in, technically, in technical training directed specifically to women farmers. And it is a first of its kind in Guatemala. The women were offered personalized technical assistance by Friendship Bridge agronomists, group trainings and field days at our demonstration plots where clients learned about modern agricultural practices in order to increase their own yields and utilize improved farming inputs and techniques. So this is things like crop rotation, pest control and accessing markets to achieve the best prices for their products. In 2017, it was reported that our clients had 57% more crop yields than prior to joining the program. And in 2019, a professor from the University of Toronto revealed in a study that participants in the agriculture program seem to show greater participation in production and decision making than other women farmers in the area who do not participate, showing a higher level of empowerment. 
and that our participants have more savings and higher incomes than other women farmers in the area who do not participate. So up until now, we've discussed the programs that we've always offered and have seen great progress with as we rolled into 2020. We started out the year on a really great high note, coming off of one of the most successful years in the organization's history. We'd met and exceeded many of the goals in our three-year strategic plan that ended in 2019. We served more than 30,000 clients who were making outstanding progress, and we were featured on Rick Steves' latest documentary and preparing for an in-person gala to celebrate our 30th birthday. And then suddenly, like everyone else, we were using the words pivot, and I hope this email finds you well in these troubling times every time we turned around. But as worried and as stressful as the situation has been in Guatemala and here in the US, we've worked really hard to take as many steps forward as possible. We fast-tracked the launch of our developing internet, Mi Puente, in order to keep homebound teammates connected, learning, and focused during lockdowns. And during the week of March 16th, 2020, our staff rallied together to make phone calls to our clients in multiple indigenous languages to ask what they were experiencing, what we could do to support them and how much they and people in their community knew about COVID-19. Our non-formal education continued via phone calls and videos in order to educate clients around health and safety and resources during lockdown, including how to take advantage of a two month grace period that we offered to all clients. Whoops. Our Health for Life program shifted to telehealth services and a call center staffed with nurses who made outbound calls with critical health information and were available to any client to call for information or guidance around COVID-19 or other chronic illnesses. Preliminary results show that clients are more willing to participate in health services right now at an estimated rate of 65.6% versus a 43% participation rate in 2019. Handmade by Friendship Bridge developed cloth face masks for clients to make and sell both locally and internationally, and launched live shopping events, making the most of the global turn to e-commerce, and leading to a sales increase of 6.5 times that of 2019. Often, we were providing the sole employment for these clients over the summer. In other extra programs, we raised over $65,000 in 60 days to feed 15,000 people, which was an enormous undertaking facilitated by partnerships with other organizations such as Unispice and Procter & Gamble. And we, in essence, provided as much support to our clients as possible and have been preparing for the long climb out of the pandemic. In 2021, we are starting that climb with some very focused goals. The first is responsible growth, we're excited to announce that we will be expanding to two new branches in 2021. The second is digital transformation. As we continue to prioritize safety and hold off from meeting in usual large groups, we are looking for ways to optimize client experiences with the programs that they value. Our social performance team is working to launch a call center for all client inquiries, creating a more direct and open communication with them. We will continue to offer continuing education for our employees through Friendship University, which is an opt-in learning center in our intranet. And we're incorporating scannable barcode systems to process handmade by Friendship Bridge production better and to sell to larger retailers. Our third goal is rolling out a new program. In September, we learned we'd received a $1 million grant to launch our newest lending option for clients that have outgrown the trust bank model and are looking for individual loans and business mentorship. And that brings us up to date in a whirlwind trip of everything up until 2020 and beyond. Hopefully you are all feeling as inspired as we are to take on poverty in 2021. If you'd like to get involved beyond donating, we have lots of great virtual events coming up and activities available. And if you have interest in any of those, you can feel free to get a hold of us via phone or email. That actually concludes this portion of the presentation. Next up, we have guest speaker and board committee member, Susie Miller. Thank you, Dana. That was beautiful. I'm always excited to just hear the latest updates myself and to see the progress that we've made. I have been involved with Friendship Bridge. Like many new donors, I started out myself, obviously, just coming to the organization through um, a Rec 
recommendation from a friend here in Wisconsin. And I have a daughter who's adopted from Guatemala. So I've always been interested in giving back in Guatemala. And my first experience with Friendship Bridge was on an insight trip in 2008. And I have to say, um, I know we'll get back to insight trips and we have our virtual insight trips, but it was an amazing experience for me. And really that's one of the things that makes our organization so great is being able to really experience the women and the culture of Guatemala and see how dedicated both our staff and our clients are to the mission. Uh, following that, I started a circle in Wisconsin where we did various activities. We sold Tipica. We also made Swittons and we um, educated people about the programs of Friendship Bridge here in Wisconsin. And then after six years of doing that, then eventually I did join the board. And I never tire of the mission of Friendship Bridge. I'm constantly inspired by the women. I'm inspired by the technical aspect of our programs. It's very hard work that our staff and uh, loan officers carry out every single day. And I work in mental health here in the United States. And I always think that the business of human change is probably one of the hardest businesses to be in. And so that's what really inspires me with Friendship Bridge is to just see how detailed our programs are and how um, we constantly strive to meet the women where they need to be met, where their needs are, and to empower them to use their own resources, use their creative talents to move ahead in the world. So it just, it's always a wonderful experience. Meeting the women is a wonderful experience, spending time um in the culture is wonderful but also just being able to help here from the u.s through our circles through involvement in our organization there's always so many chances throughout the year to participate as a um, collaborator with friendship bridge and that's really uh, exceptional in our organization something i love so much so that is my story and i'm just grateful that you gave me this moment to share with all of you well we're grateful to have you with us and to share your story so thank you so much for that well thank you dana thank you nicole thank you susie thank you Natalie. Yeah, thank you so much yes. thank you carrie